people of Belka, I speak to you today not just as your leader, but as the supreme commander of your armed forces. As of today, we are in a state of war. At 4 a.m. this morning, our national army crossed the border into Yuktabania as a response to continue Yuktabanian investing in Imperial agents in our country. Yes, hey, um, can I just grab you just for a moment? This is the worst time that mm. you could be. The thing is, the 13 billion we gave you uh, and your family to invade your neighbours, uh, you know, in the war, War stuff. Um, I was kind of wondering if, if we could get a refund because I've got I've still what? Got, I've still got the receipt um, here. So I thought what we could do is um, we could get our money back and you guys could get back your undying allegiance to your neighbours. Eleven thousand of my soldiers are dead which invalidates the warranty. I don't know how we could have been any more clear yeah. about that. No, I, I did see that on the small print, but I thought it was, I still had the receipt, I still had the receipt. I told you, Kevin, I knew, I was still had the receipt, so I just thought it might be worth popping, see if we can get a refund. Well, you have to, though. Yeah, you gotta give it a go. You gotta give it a go. Uh, fair enough. I'm just gonna... All right, yeah, cheers. The killing of the people! Oh boy, this is going to be like shut up and sit down in the early days. Do you remember those when we were still trying to hook people into this hobby of cardboard curiosities? When we would say, folks, folks, I know it doesn't look like much and it's got weird wooden components and odd chunky cardboard and paper money, but I promise you, it's some of the most intelligent gaming that money can buy. Do you remember that? I am back here again, right now, with this, telling you once more, that money can buy you love, and also anything else. Imperial 2030 is not new, and it's not particularly shiny or sexy or good looking either. And it's maybe not even all that comfortable with a cover that looks oddly like a certain rather famous political photo taken recently. But it does have a reputation as being one of the absolute finest strategic board games ever made. So come with me now as I take you back to what I guess board gamers would kind of consider ancient history as we return to the year of 2009. Imperial 2030 is a newer, grander version of a 2006 board game simply called Imperial, which was all about investing in European powers and then pitching them against each other so that you could make more money to invest in them so you could do it again. The first thing, the very first thing you need to do when you crack open this box is divorce yourself from any concepts of patriotism or loyalty or value or anything like this because while you might start off controlling the, the wonderful blue ships of the European nations or the, the candy coloured uh, armies of the United States of America, at any point you could pull the financial ripcord on your golden parachute and decide I'm just going to invest somewhere else instead and take over a completely different nation or two. This is how we begin. The lovely planet Earth is unblemished and it's dominated by six world powers that are themselves dotted with factories that can produce armies and navies. And as we know, the two chief properties of armies are one, they are different colours and two, they can go places. And when armies go places, they become little planters, plopping flags behind them to show how they are colouring the map in, right? So far, so risk. No. You see, when armies inevitably meet, as they do, they don't necessarily have to fight. The players controlling them can just decide that they don't want to have a ruckus right now. And they don't. And when they do fight, they wipe each other out at a one-to-one -one ratio. That's it. It's that simple. It's kind of... It's elegant, it's sort of oddly wasteful. And also this complete absence of luck is one of the things that contributes to this game having so many fans. Players start off with controlling stakes in different powers with whoever has the larger stake always being the player who will decide what that power does. And that could be, could be making some more armies with your cool factories, could be moving those armies around to visit their neighbours to just say hello, put a lovely new flag down there. It could be making even more factories to make 
even more armies or it could be even importing if for some reason your factories are out of commission you could still pay a little bit of money to import armies whatever you choose to do you will place down that army's marker token on what board game scientists are calling a rondelle but what i prefer to call the wheel of fortune each turn it's around this wheel that the powers of the world will move taking one to three spaces or paying money if they'd like to take larger leaps with the spaces that they pass over being as brain burning as the ones they finally choose to settle on and only some of these are actually about all of these armies and factories the rest they're about money let's talk taxes because i know you love those when powers earn taxes they uh they earn money based on the amount of factories that they have and also the amount of territories that they have plopped their friendly flags down into including sea spaces that money then goes into their power treasury and then immediately comes out again to pay for the cost of however many armies they have now if they've earned a lot of tax money a small bonus is paid to the controlling player as well. Now, I hear what you're saying. You're saying, wait, Paul, 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 wait. You're saying players and powers have entirely separate bodies of cash? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they do. And you're also saying, I can hear you from here. You're saying, Paul, hold on. If a power has a really big army, could it go bust just paying its expenses? Of course it could, yeah but it's more likely to go bust when it pays out to its investors. Let's talk investing, because investing is the secret source that oozes its way throughout this game. Investing is rare, but it is very important. When you plop yourself down on that investor space, you cause the power to pay out of its treasury to everybody who has some kind of a stake in it. In theory, because you are the player in charge of the power, you have the highest stake, so you're doing this because you think you're going to get the most money. You're going to get a bit big wad of cash, right? Maybe. So, the power pays out of its treasury, but it also honors the people who have all the smaller stakes first. You can have stakes in one, two, three, four, all the way up to nine. It then pays gradually to people with higher stakes if it's liquid enough. Did you spend all your money on tanks? You did, didn't you? Yeah. Or maybe somebody else did and now this is the power that you've inherited. Somebody else has already ruined it. That's okay, that's fine. Because even if you don't actually choose this, even if you pass over the investor space, investor related things still happen that could help you or somebody. You see, this special investor biscuit is forever circling the table going from player to player whenever anybody doesn't matter who puts their mark onto or past the invest space soon as it comes to a new player that player gets another two million something whatever the game's currency is and can then invest that in more stakes uh, either an increased amount of investment in something they're already invested in or maybe they look around they try something new if you happen to then be the highest investor in a power, maybe you just jumped up past someone else, congratulations, you now have that power. You now get to control that world power and move it around that rondel. You love that rondel, don't you? You're disgusting. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you're just the person who has, uh, you've got one Brazil. Congratulations on your one Brazil. That could still come in very useful. I have launched into a description of this game's parts without really describing it as a whole, but I am hoping that you are now seeing how all of those parts click together like orgasmic Lego. Imperial 2030 is only a game about making money and nothing else. That is all that matters. Everything else going on is multinational frosting. All you really need to care about is expanding the powers that you have control of taxing when they are big and constantly trying to invest in whatever other powers you can with the hope you'll either take them over or at least make a bit more money when they do their next payout 
At the same time, powers are going to be bought out from under you. That's normal. That's okay as well, because you maintain your previous level of investment. Nobody can take that away from you. And if you do find that everything that you had a control of has been bought away from you, then, mm, well, actually, that, that does suck because you basically spend a while just watching other people play. But you do get a cool Swiss bank account. You get to become an investor who can invest more often than anyone else. You basically have fewer responsibilities and more opportunities. It's okay. I mean, it's, it's a form of compensation and it's not... It's not bad. The game ends when one of the world powers reaches the very top of this special multiplier track. And it's a track that they're all gradually advancing their way up every time they tax according to how much they earn. If they earn a lot, they jump up faster. And at the game's end, everybody compares the amount of investment they have in each power with where it has ended on the multiplier track to see how much they're earning. That means even if you didn't cap out at the very top here, if you had a cool investment in that power anyway, you could still earn quite a lot from it. Same as you could still earn quite a lot from everything if you've been shrewd with your investments. Times four for both of these. It's quite good. So, time out. I have just given you a whole bunch of mechanics and description without really explaining how it feels. And that's because I first want you to gauge what you think of a game that is full of wooden tanks, but has pretty much no combat mechanics. A game that can allow players to have multiple turns in a row because they've got controlling stakes in multiple powers, but then be won by someone else who barely did anything for half the time you were playing just because they invested wiser. A game that has really uh, not the best looks, not a very good manual, and is so beige. It's just, it, it bleeds beige, that's how it feels. Are you excited about beige? When you go on holiday to California, do you go to the beige area? Mm. Yeah, this game has its difficulties. You can find yourself with nothing to do for multiple slow turns in a row. Maybe all of you just watching other people play sort of with themselves. You see, there's also no trading. And while you can make verbal agreements with other players, and you probably will, at least to some degree, sometimes at critical points, the game doesn't allow you to uh, trade any stakes back and forth, give money to other people. And it's all part of the philosophy that the mechanics and only the mechanics should dictate what happens on the board, what happens in all these economies. Yeah, it makes sense. And I, I agree with this and I respect this. But for a game whose theme is about global super capitalists, global super capitalists, that idea, it just feels a little bit stale. If you're not interested, I understand. Imperial 2030 is fundamentally mercenary. Your investment is just that. It's just investments. It's not ideological or nationalistic or thematic. And in fact, this game does not really have that much in terms of theme or style. It's not a game of high drama either. It's not a game of plot twists or huge sudden surprises. It's a game of careful consideration, edging towards an inevitable climax. It's a game, however, where the, the balance of power twists and turns all the time, where it seesaws like a playground full of seesaws that you are all of you constantly riding all the time. This game is a constant puzzle where all the pieces are forever changing size and shape and finding new ways to lock together. There's the puzzle of timing, of when are you going to do something? Should you tax right now? Is it really a good time? Will you make a lot of money? But then also if you do, you have to wait for an entire circuit of the Wheel of Fortune before you can do it again. Can you buy a controlling stake in someone who is about to tax and then take advantage of that? Is now a good time for a war? Maybe it was a great idea for Brazil to conquer half of Africa and try for North America, but armies are expensive. And actually having a fight with India would probably cut down both of your costs. That's grim, isn't it? 
And what I also love, what I love so much, is that you have your own private wallet of money all the time. Obviously, countries have their own treasuries, they can run dry. But as I said, first of all, people can take power away from you, but they cannot take your stakes away from you, and they cannot take the money that is in your wallet away from you. That is always yours, that is always safe. You spend that how and when you like. It adds, in a world of uncertainty, it adds a vital, vital layer of security. What's more, all of the information you need is right here in front of you all of the time, in the distribution of, of armies, in the controlling stocks that, that people have, in how much money is in treasury. Yes, Imperial 2030 is mercenary, but it is also, in being so mercenary, it's just, it's pure. As some of you will know, there are other games that share some similar ideas and mechanics. There's certainly quite a lot of games out there that are about investing in each other's success and buying out other players, profiting from the things that they do well. And a lot of these games tend to be based around sort of 1800s type railroad tycoon. And that does appeal, but I'm not as excited about playing an old white dude with puffy cloud sideburns as I am about being a global spanning super capitalist person who can just buy the world. Like, I have been excited about being Brazil and closing the Panama Canal, or that time I drove into Russia and just shut all their factories down, or the time that I bought America, which it's not perfect, it has its problems, but it's quite good. I was quite pleased with that purchase. I think on the whole that was a wise decision. And all of this plus the, the single-minded sort of sveltness of the design means it's, it's, it's impossible not to recommend Imperial 2030. I am sorry, sorry. You always phone me while I'm doing reviews. Hello. Hi, Paul. Yeah, you said he doesn't do refunds, so all of the shut up is it down donation money is is gone. Damn. We've also started a war. Thousands of people are dead. Um, I don't think it's safe for me to be here anymore. Well, can you get a flight home? Uh, I'm not sure. They've closed the airports. Ah. Oh. I really shouldn't have invested all of my money into those dodgy condoms. Didn't they say you could pull out any time? No, it was that you had to pull out before a certain time. Listen, Paul. Um, when a man and a woman love each other, or sometimes a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, but then that's not relevant to... Or sometimes when a man and a woman and a man, or a man and a man and a man love each other, um, sometimes you've got to protect yourself against life and life's, uh, and one of the things that you have to protect against in life is a good thing. It's a good thing, but sometimes it's not a good thing and you just have to be, um, aware of that and... Listen, Paul, I'm stuck in a desert. Can you send some money or a helicopter or, or something? Ha! Yeah. Well, I've just bought the desert. So hopefully, when you turn things around for yourself, I'll make a tidy profit in the process. You know the drill by now. If you want to see more videos like this one, like and subscribe and head over to our website, shutupandsitdown.com, where we have hundreds more, along with written reviews and, and news and special features, podcasts, six years worth of stuff. Why not check out the Ethnos review, which we also said, like Imperial 2030, doesn't look all that exciting. It's actually really good. If we get enough views on that, we will get Matt out of the desert. Because that's how video reviews work. You watch a thing enough and it makes something happen in the real world. That's, that's what I was told. Is that... Is he just f***ing?